Good morning, everyone, and welcome to another episode of the Business Breakthrough with Barbara Show. <sighs> Guys, we are talking about a very important subject, something that I know all of you struggle with or have struggled with at some point or will struggle with again at some point. Um, I know this is one of the most requested topics that I get, that I get, and I probably have talked about this before, but I will do it again, and I will add different angles, and I will just continue to add on to this conversation, because I think it's really, really important. As Well, let's just start by telling you what we're talking about today, which is how to get people to actually see the value in paying for help versus always looking for free stuff, okay? So you guys probably have had so many individuals who are like, I love the work that you do, I love what you're doing, but I just can't, you know, I can't afford it, it's not the right time, this, this, and that, and they stick around in your community or your email list or whatever, and they're always consuming your content that they're just never willing to invest, okay? Um... So yeah, we're going to dive into that today. There's so many things I have to say, like so many. Um, obviously, this is the number one thing that I help my clients with. It's one of the main things that we're always working through. But also, also, um, it's something that I want to help you create a lot of ease around and understand it. Because for those of you who are like new coaches, let's say you're just getting started, you may have this idea of like, what am I doing wrong? What's wrong with me? What am I doing wrong? Why does this happen to me? And why does that not happen to Barb's? Why do I see so many coaches not struggling with this or not encountering this situation? And why do I always have to encounter it, right? Like, why is it always a stumbling block for me? And you may feel on top of everything, right? Like on top of figuring out how to get people to see the value in paying, on top of trying to figure out how to like uh, market yourself and grow your business and get more clients and all of that good stuff, you are also beating yourself up because you're doing it wrong, you're not doing it good enough, you're not good enough, and then that just becomes a very overwhelming and defeated experience, right? Which ultimately backtracks your progress, okay? So, oh, let's see. Penny, good morning, Brianna. Welcome, ladies. So happy to have you here. Hi, Nikki. Welcome, welcome. Who else is here? Drop me a comment. Let me know that you're here. Where are you tuning in from? Um, I'm going to dive right in today. I have one reminder and one reminder only. And after that, we're going to dive right into the subject. You may or may not have seen, you probably have seen because we have been promoting it like crazy, um, my Black Friday, my Conscious Black Friday offer. Okay, so I'm going to tell you what it is. Two minutes, stick with me, and then I'm going to dive right in into how to get people to see the value of what you offer versus always them wanting free stuff. Okay, so Black Friday, Conscious Black Friday. Here's what it is. My most popular coaching program, my six-month one-on-one coaching mentorship, it's called Magnetizing Success. I've had this program for years and years on end. Um, It's amazing. I literally joined forces with my clients for six months, they start most of the time with zero, zero business, zero clarity, zero nothing. And then they end up fully booked with clients that they love because we do deep process, deep um, work on marketing strategies, building your business, getting out there, making sure that you're doing the right things in your business. I literally teach you exactly how to grow your business. And simultaneously, I'm helping you build your confidence, move through your fears, uh, get rid of your doubts and all of that good stuff. So it's my favorite program. It's amazing. We become business partners for six months. I'm always booked out for it. And for Conscious Black Friday, I opened up two spots at a very, very discounted rate. Um, so you get $3,000 off the entire program. And I only have one left, okay? So for those of you who have been wanting to work with a coach for a long-term relationship so that you can see massive transformation in your business in six months, book a discovery call. I have one spot. You have to book a discovery call before the end of the week. If you do not book a discovery call before the end of the week, you cannot get the Black Friday offer. You can book it for next week if you want. It just needs to be booked by the end of this week. 
so we can chat. I want to get to know your business. I want to see what you want to achieve. And if I'm the right person to support you, we'll see if the Conscious Black Friday offer is for you. There should be a link for you to check out the program. And there also should be a link for you to book a discovery call. All right. With that said, let's dive right in. If anyone has questions, let me know too, by the way. Okay, I'm a new coach. I'm at zero. So am I. Hello. Okay, starting also. Beautiful. Okay. So love that you guys are new coaches because obviously that's who I serve, but also because this is such an important conversation for you to hear right now before you get overwhelmed by this idea. Okay. So the first thing I want to say around getting people to actually pay versus always wanting free stuff is this. (sighs) Write this down because it's something that I want you to go back to over and over and over again. If you're one of my clients and you're here, you know that we have gone through this many, many times and we always circle back to this idea. But it's not your job to get people to buy. It's not your job to get people to buy. How does that feel? Some of you are probably like, what do you mean? I'm a business owner. I'm in the business of getting clients and making people buy, right? But I would argue that that's not true, right? Because you cannot control who's going to buy or not. And the more that you try to control that, the harder it's going to be for you to sell. Okay, so your job is not to get people to buy. Your job is to do the best literally possible that you could to help them see the value in what you have to offer, okay? So if you want to get people to see the value in investing, you first need to get them to see the value in your offer, right? Then we're going to talk about, like, how do we get them to actually pay and all of that good stuff. But right now, I just need you to understand that it's not your job to get people to buy. Welcome, everyone that's joining um, Zipporah, oh my God, I love that name. Tell me if I said it wrong, but I love it. Talina, okay, perfect, perfect. All right. At any point, if you guys have questions or want me to stop or want me to like dive deeper into something, let me know because I'm here to answer them. So that's the first thing that we need to do, okay? We need to help people see the value in what we have to offer. Now, after that, they make the choice if they want to invest or if they don't. That's just the way it works. Can we implement things and processes and ways of selling and ways of building your business that increases the chances of people seeing the value, that increases the chances of you getting individuals who are more ready to invest? Yes, of course. That's like literally what I do on a day-to-day basis. But Ultimately, you can't control if someone says, I'm sorry, I don't want to join. And the next one, you're going to love even more, which is that's a normal part of business, right? Getting people to say, I'm sorry, I don't have the money right now is a normal part of business, right? If you're expecting to get a yes on every single Uh, sales calls that you hop on, then those are very, very pressuring uh, expectations for yourself, right? Because then every time that you're going to know, you're going to be like, what's wrong with me? Why am I doing this wrong? And all that good stuff. Like I said, we're going to talk about how to make that happen less and less. We're going to talk about little things and little mindsets that you can acquire and, and strategies that you can start implementing to make sure that doesn't happen as often, right? Or to make sure that if it does happen, we know what to do and how to navigate it in a way that gets the person to see the value even more. But if we go into sales with the idea that we have to get people to buy and it is our responsibility to make them make that choice, then that's when sales start feeling pushy. Right. Like if let's say you and I are working together and you're hopping in your first call. Imagine if I told you, like, you have to do everything possible to get that client to say yes. You're going to be like, I hate selling. I hate selling. 
I, I can't do this, right? Because you're literally like forcing someone to do something that they don't want, okay? So does this feel relieving for you? Like, do you feel a little bit like, oh my God, I can breathe. Like, I don't have to like be super pushy. I don't have to convince people. I just have to learn how to help them see the value so that they can make that decision on their own more and more and more. And you can consistently get more yeses, yeah? Tell me if you guys are getting this. Tell me if it feels good. Tell me if you feel some resistance about it. Um, I want to know what you feel, okay? Now, here's where we're going to dive deep into, like, what to do, right? Now that we're, like, understanding of what business looks like, just so you guys know, I hop on calls all the time who say no right? Or not yet, or it's not the right time, or follow up with me, or I have to talk to my husband, or I never hear from them again, right? It happens less and less, right? Like the more that you're in business, the less that that happens, but it always happens. It always happens, right? Like you are always going to get an individual who may not be 100% committed. And that's across the board in any industry. Think about a gym, right? Like, let's say someone wants to join a gym. How many times, how many months go by before they make the decision? Or how many times they think that they should do something, but they don't? Yeah. So that is a really good segue into my next point, guys, which is the work that we do as coaches or service-based entrepreneurs, whatever industry you're in. But typically the work that we do has a lot of resistance embedded into it. Okay, so let me give you an example. If you're a health coach, guess what you're helping people do? You are helping them lose weight, heal their gut, uh, you know, wake up with more energy, um, navigate their gluten intolerance, like whatever, whatever you specialize in. Also, guess what's probably one of the things in your client's lives that they have the most resistance to. Change around their health, right? If you're a career coach working with women who have really crappy jobs, right? And they just want to get a better job, but they've been stuck in there for 10 years. And your job as a coach is to help them go through the application process so that they can get closer to that higher paying job that gives them more freedom and flexibility and that they're working with a team that they love. Guess where your clients are going to have resistance in the very thing that you help them do. It's even the same thing for business, right? Like you hear so many people especially nowadays, right? Like with everything that's going on in the world, with so many people getting laid off, there's so many individuals who are like, I want a business, I want a business, I want a business, right? But business is a lot of internal work, external work. It requires a lot of bravery and it requires a lot of courage and consistency and all that good stuff. So guess what my clients have resistant towards? Growing their business, right? Exactly. So Penny says no one really likes change. And what we are doing as coaches is helping people change. So doesn't it make sense that your clients will have some type of resistance to working with you? Of course. Right? It makes sense that your clients will have a little bit of fear. It makes sense that your clients will sabotage themselves when they're about to make the decision that's going to change their life and their business and their health and their career and their relationship, like whatever coaching you do, it makes total sense that at that point, they sabotage themselves. It makes total sense that at that that point, all the fears start coming up. And it also makes total sense that at that point, they start making every excuse in the book to not move forward. Is this going to be every client? No, but it's just really helpful to be aware that the work that we do is naturally something that people are resistant to. And when we know that, then what we can do is we can show up for that experience, right? Like instead of showing up thinking like, 
I need people to convert. I need people to convert. I need people to buy. I need people to buy. Why do I only get freebie seekers? We're showing up for the experience of the work that I do is so transformational and so deep that it's so normal for people to have resistance when they're about to make that investment, right? You hear it all. You hear, I'll invest. I'll invest some money when I can prove myself that I can lose 20 pounds, which is so counterproductive because if you have been trying to lose weight for two years and you haven't succeeded and you just found the coach that will help you do that and you feel really good with that decision, but then you're going to try to do it on your own before you invest, right? Like that's just sabotaging behavior. It's the same thing for business. I get it all the time where it's like, I have to do X before I do this, but what what's changed over the years is that we go into it i go into it with the mindset and the no, the knowing that that's normal right and i i'm happy to get this resistance i'm happy to get these objections because what that helps us do is it helps us show up for those conversations in a stronger way And it helps us start serving our clients before we even start working with the clients. I promise this is all going to make more and more sense as I talk, okay? Let me just read some comments. Let's take a pause. (sighs) My biggest obstacle is what I want most. Ooh, tell me more about that. What do you mean by that? My biggest obstacle is what I want more. Right, so do you mean like kind of what I was saying before where it's like, what we desire to do and what we desire to change is usually the thing that is the hardest for us, right? I think that's what, you talk, what you're talk. What you talking about, but let me know if I'm on point there. This makes so much sense. As a health coach, I notice the more change a person needs, there's more resistance. Exactly. Exactly. Now, that's not bad. That's not bad. That's just something that we need to be aware of, okay? And that's just something that we need to get really, really good and tactful at navigating. Okay. So here's where it gets a little blurry. Okay. There's a lot of business coaches out there giving you advice. There's a lot of people teaching you how to sell and all that good stuff. So here's where it gets a little blurry because then you're like, you're put in this situation where you know your clients, not all of them guys. Some people will be like, heck yes, I'm scared. I have fear, but you know what? This feels really good to me and I'm going to do the scary thing and move forward with this because I'm ready to do the change. It happened to make the change. It happens all the time. That's going to happen a lot too, but we're talking about when it does, when it doesn't happen. I don't want you to feel like every single client that you're going to talk to or every single sell that you're going to make is going to be super hard. That's not the case. You're going to have easy sales all the time as well. But when you do get individuals who are resistant and they just want to keep consuming or they want to keep trying to do it on their own or they just want to uh, read stuff instead of like investing in the support. This is what we're talking about. This is where we're going through. Okay. So, okay. So we know that it's normal. Okay. I'm just kind of like going through the process. We know that it's normal. We know that it happens to everyone. We know that it's not our job to help them make the decision. And we also know that, of course, our clients are going to have resistance because the work that we do is literally changing their life and change is hard. Now, what do we do? What most coaches will tell you is, okay, so here's where you sell. Here's where you go all in um, into like the very masculine of it and you sell and you help them see the value and you, you really like tackle the objection. And I've heard horror stories when it comes to sales. I've heard um, like people forcing individuals into getting a credit card. I've heard people telling people that they need to sell something in order to um, do coaching with them. And look, look, if someone on their own is like, this is the thing that's going to change my life, I'm going to go ahead and apply for a credit card so I can invest in the thing that's going to help my change my life. Great. That's their choice. That's their empowered choice as an individual. There's nothing wrong with that. But if you're like, well, if you really want it, then you have to go and get it and you have to, sorry, laundry. Um, and you have to make everything uh, happen. And, you know, if you don't do that, then that means that you're not committed enough, right? That's where it gets a little iffy because there's people out there teaching that. 
there's people out there teaching like, well, when that resistance comes up, make sure you don't let them off the hook. That to me, I would never get a client in my life if that's how I had to sell. I literally would never get a client in my life if, if I had to tell them that if they don't hire me or that they don't, if they don't take the next step, they're not going to see results in their business. I would never get a client in my life if I have to tell them that, hey, you don't want this enough if you're not willing to uh, take scary action. And you probably will have a lot of resistance to selling as well if you feel like you have to force people like that. Can I get an a- amen? Do you guys resonate with this? Does this feel good? Are you like, yes, I hate pushing in sales like that. I've been taught that before. I've heard that before. And it just doesn't resonate with me. If that's you, here's what we do instead. Um, I want my business to launch and be successful, but I am possessing anxiety and doubting me with every decision I make concerning my business. Yes, Nikki. So, of course, of course you are. Because you're doing something new, you're doing something scary, you're stepping out of your comfort zone, you're probably trying to do this on your own, right? So it's it's a scary decision, and this is normal, right? And what you're experiencing right now, so like, you're technically my potential client, right? So like, what you're experiencing right now, that like nervousness of growing a business, it's probably what your clients experience as well. Whenever they want to talk to you about working with you, right? Like, they, they feel that oh my God, can I really do this? Is this going to be really hard? I feel a little anxious and all of that good stuff. Okay, Penny says, I hate being pushy. High five, virtual high five. Okay, so what do we do instead? We coach. We don't push. We don't force people into getting credit cards or selling their engagement rings or I don't even know. I don't even know what some of these coaches do, but we don't do that. We coach and we coach in a very tactful way. We, we coach in a way, if you guys were here for the episode where I talked about why my clients don't like me, this is where it comes up again. I talked about why my clients don't like me sometimes. And it's because when they hire me, um, they don't hire me to be like their best friend who's always going to just be like, good, you're doing good, keep going, right? Like cheerleading is part of my job, but also part of my job is seeing where they're sabotaging themselves, is seeing where they're being anxious, is seeing where they are saying that they're going to do something and they don't do it, right? So there are parts in coaching where we have not difficult conversations, but there's definitely conversations where they may be triggered or they feel a little bit of resistance, right? And that's my job as a coach. And I would say like 9.9 out of 10 times, my clients come back and they're like, that was the best coaching session I've ever had. I can't believe you made me see that. Okay. But that's because I'm willing to have uncomfortable conversations at that point. And I'm willing to ask uncomfortable questions as a coach. So we do that even before people are clients. And here's why. Number one, this is the only way that you can navigate resistance in a way that's not pushing. (sighs) Jesus. My laundry really wants to come out. Um, This is the the way that you can navigate resistance without being pushy. And this is also super important, right? Because how you show up to that call is going to determine how you show up as a coach. And it's also going to let them know what type of coach you are, right? So just an example. If someone comes to a call and they tell me like, okay, cool. I know that if I work with you for six months, I know for a fact that I will get clients. I know for a fact that my business will grow. Like I've seen you, I follow you, I watch your live streams, I read your emails. Like I know that you're the thing that I need, okay? But I'm just really scared to invest that amount of money, okay? At that point, you have a choice. You have many choices, right? Like you can push and you can be like, I get that you're scared, but you need to get a credit card and sign up right now. Otherwise you don't want it bad enough. That's a eh for me. You could be like, okay, awesome. Talk to you later. Let me know if you ever want to sign up. Bye-bye. That's also a eh for me. The reason why, it's because if I do that then, right, that's what they're expect. Like, if they ever do end up signing up, that's what they expect as a client later on. 
they expect that every time something gets hard or every time they feel resistance or every time they sabotage themselves, they expect me to just be like, okay, no problem. Cool. Keep going just because I'm afraid of having that uncomfortable conversation. It's the same thing for self. If you want to get people to see the value in investing in you, you have to show up as a coach and be willing to have those uncomfortable conversations. And like I said on that other live stream, you guys can go watch it after this. Like I said on that live stream, it's not a crazy uncomfortable conversation, right? Like it's not like we're talking about Uh, trauma as a child like it, it we're not doing like therapy it's uncomfortable because you ask questions that they otherwise would not ask themselves and you make you help them think about things that they otherwise would not think a lot of times your clients don't understand things that you do right like I've been doing this for six years I've been working with new coaches for over six years so I understand what happens when you get the right support, but they may not. And if you say, okay, bye, then you're leaving them empty handed in the sense that you didn't get them to think farther than they would. Okay. So if someone comes to me and they're like, I'm just really scared of investing. Um, I know that you're the thing that's going to help me. And I know that this is what I need and I really want to do it, but I'm just really scared. I don't think it's the right time for me. It just feels really, really scary. Don't be afraid to ask the questions right? Don't be afraid to say like, I totally get that coaching is a scary investment because it is, right? It's at this point, it's probably one of the biggest investments that you've made in your life, right? Totally true. We don't have to hide that. There's no hiding that, okay? But what I know to be true is that if you do ever decide to work with me and we do ever take your business to where you want to see it, I promise you that there will be so many situations in which you will feel petrified, okay? And when you encounter situations that feel like the best next step for you, that feel like the thing that you need to be doing and fear comes up, that's where you get to make a choice. You get to make a choice of, am I going to show up and move through this fear or am I going to show in, you know? And whether you want to invest at this point or not, it's totally up to you. There's zero pressure on this decision. But I do want to make you aware that as you grow a business and as you become a successful coach and business owner, this exact emotion and this exact resistance that you're feeling is going to show up over and over and over again, right? And the reason why I'm bringing this up is because that's the things that we're going to start changing together. Those are the habits that we're going to move through. And those are the habits that we're going to master. That every time that you get scared, that every time that you get anxious, that every time you get overwhelmed, you don't back out. You don't run away. You show up and you move through it. And that's how you're going to see results. Okay. So I'm going to leave you off and I'm going to give you time to think about it. And there's zero pressure from my end. Okay. But think about how important it is at some point to feel the fear and do it anyway, right? Like if you really feel like this is not the thing and if you really feel like this is not the right time, totally fine. We can talk a little bit later, but just take some time to digest it and take some time to really think about how you want to um, navigate situations where fear comes up. Because I promise you, I promise you, there's going to be so many more moving forward. Was I pushy? Did I force them to get a credit card? Did I force them to sell their goods and services and move in with their parents? No. But did I run away from an uncomfortable conversation? No. Right? If you want to help people see the value in what you do, number one, show up as the person that you would show up for them. And then number two, help them see the value in what you do. I know it sounds very simple, but it's very hard. It took me a long time to be willing and open to have these conversations. But what you will learn through this process is that this is going to make you a way better coach. This is going to make you convert so many more clients. This is going to help you get clients who are empowered, right? And it's also like whether they sign up or not, you are already helping them by being willing to have that conversation with them. You're already helping them. Like in this example that I gave you, whether this person signs up with me or not, right? 
just by having that conversation with them, I'm already increasing the, va- the, the chances of them seeing the value and in investing in me, right? But even if they decide to like, no, I'm not going to do it, that person already got value in their life because now they know, hey, what you're feeling right now, that happened, right? And you need to be aware that it's your choice It's your choice on a second-to-second basis to choose how you are going to um, navigate that. How? What are you going to do when fear comes up? At least, whether this person doesn't sign up, at least this person is now aware, right, of her pattern, of how she shows up to fear, of how she lets fear um, run the show sometimes. Is this making sense? Is this resonating? Is this feeling good? Let me know. I'm going to go back and look at comments. Let's see what's happening. Nina says, I love this. Yay. Okay. So happy that you're loving it. Um, I'm doing something very similar. Okay. I think you're talking about how you navigate it because that's what I was talking about, but maybe not. What kind of coach am I? Show up for the person in the discover call the same way I would for someone I was actually coaching. Exactly. So if you don't, then... If you're like showing up as someone completely different, then it's going to be really hard for you because now you're, you embarked on a two month, three month, six month journey with someone. And now you're going to either have to fake it or that person is just going to be really mad because they thought they signed up with someone else. Yeah. So that's a big, big mistake that I see. Okay. Above uh, everything else that I told you above everything else that I told you, which is like, It's not your job to make the decision for them. Um, You know, coaching equals resistance and that's normal. Be okay with it. Like, this is like the cherry on top. The cherry on top, it's like, don't just let them go. Actually navigate the objection. Like, figure out what's going on there. Help them see things that they would not see on their own. A lot of times, one of my coaches years ago she taught me something that I thought was so valuable and I bring it to so many things that I do, which is a lot of times because your clients are here and you're here, not like I'm above my clients or you're above your clients or anything like that, but like a lot of times in their journey, they're a little bit behind, right? That's not always true. I actually sometimes work with people who are farther ahead in like income wise, but confidence-wise and other things they need support with, but that's just like a side note. But a lot of times your clients are going to be here and you're going to be here. Maybe I need to do it backwards because you guys are probably seeing me different, but whatever, you're going to be here and they're going to be here or vice versa. A lot of times they're going to need to borrow your belief, right? A lot of times when I hop on the phone with new coaches, and they're like, I know that this is what I need and I know that this is what I want right? They may think that they need it and they want it, but they may not have the belief that they can actually achieve results because they're new. They, there's so much fear. There's so much resistance. Maybe they've tried for a long time and it hasn't worked. Maybe they've invested in something before and it didn't work. So it's really, really helpful to help them borrow that belief. And the way to do that, to help them do that is by letting them see things that they will not see on their own. If you want them to see the value in paying for your services, you have to actually be willing to have conversations that helps them see the value. Like in the example that I mentioned before, I literally said, I totally get what you're feeling. This is super normal. It's probably your first big investment. So many of my clients feel this. Totally okay, whatever you decide, but here's what I have to say. This is probably an emotion and a a, a point that you get to often, right? Like where you feel fear, where you feel resistance, where you feel anxious, where you feel overwhelmed, right? And it's also probably a habit to want to run away from the uncomfortable decision, to want to run away from executing on the uncomfortable strategy. And that is one of the most important things that we are going to be working through. And that's one of the most important things that's going to help you grow your business, right? The more that you come to this crossroad in your journey, and the more that you learn how to show up as a CEO and how to move through the fear and how to move through the resistance, the more that you're going to achieve in your business. Your client will not be able to see that if you don't let them see that. Is this making sense? Um, 
Okay, Nikki says yes. Okay, thank you. You guys know I need external validation in these live streams to make sure that this is resonating with you. Um, that's honestly the biggest shift that I want you guys to make. Be, be willing to have uncomfortable conversations even before the person is a client. Don't push them, but also don't let them go. And what I mean by don't let them go, it's like if they're going to bring up destructive uh, patterns to your sales call, don't just say, okay, that's fine. I'm going to let you go and continue doing your destructive patterns. Okay, I'm fine. I'm going to let you go and continue. Uh, um allowing yourself to make excuses for the things that you want without at least helping you see that that's what's happening. Yeah. Um, another good example and a good tip here is always try to get to what's the objection under the objection, right? Like when people are like, sorry, I can't pay for this. Um, it's not the right time, whatever, whatever. I'll just keep consuming your content and then I'll think about it. Dive deeper right? Like what's the objection under the objection? A lot of times when people are like money, like they bring up the money, this is a thin line because there are people in the world who actually do not have the money. I'm like so against other coaches who are like, people always have the money. That's not true, right? I think what they mean is like, there are always a lot of ways to try to find the money. Like if you leave uh, in places like the US, Australia, um, England, like right, like you probably have ways of selling your stuff or applying for credit, right? Or perhaps getting a family member to uh, give you a loan or whatever. There, there are ways to try to figure out how to get what you want. I think that's what they mean. But there are also times where people don't have the money, right? But a lot of times there's a thing under the thing, okay? A lot of times there's a thing under the thing. A lot of times is I don't have the money, but really, I'm just scared that if I invest this money, I'm not going to make my money back. Or I'm just scared that if I invest this money, I'm not going to show up for my investment because I can't even show up to wake up in the morning and have an apple instead of five fried eggs. So what makes me feel like I'm going to show up to work with a coach for four months to help me heal my gut? Right? So also be willing to dive a little deeper there like what's underneath do they not trust themselves do they not trust you enough is it a time issue if it is a time issue then that's something that you can navigate with them and always do it with ease and the way to do it with ease is to be detached from the outcome is to know that some people are going to be a yes and some people are going to be a no right like I'm priming you for this already guys you're gonna get yeses and you're gonna get no's and that's okay and the more that you're like, okay with that, where you're like, cool, I'm going to hop on some calls. You're not going to go the way I expect them. No big deal. I'll keep going until I get that yes. The more that you can have the sales calls and the sales conversations, whether you do them through the phone or through email or through Facebook Messenger, whatever, the more that you can have them with ease and the more that you can show up confidently and help them see the value in paying for what you do. Yeah? Okay. Last but not least, so we went through all of that. Now, what if someone still says no? What if they're like, I totally get that, but it's just really not the right time for me. You bless, release, and keep going. That's it. It's honestly, it's really that simple. I know it doesn't feel simple because we want the client, right? Like, especially as a new coach, you want the client. You want to grow the business. You want to make money. So it's really hard to be like, Bless, release, and keep going. Ta -ding! Like, no, it's not like rainbows and butterflies. Like, you will feel disappointed. You will feel a little annoyed. You will feel a little overwhelmed. You may doubt yourself. If you're working with a coach, you may have to talk to that coach and be like, I'm feeling all of this. I'm feeling defeated. Can I really do this, right? And then you release it, and then you keep going, and you do it over and over again, and that's how you get booked out. Again, it sounds very simple, but there's so many things in between that make it a little bit difficult. I always say this, but I promise you, I promise you, if you got on the phone, if you've been struggling to get one client, if you got on the phone, on the phone with 20 people, I'm 99.99% sure that you will get a client. 
consistently, right? Like, it's not like if you got on the phone today and then next year you get on the phone with someone and then six months from then you get on the phone. with Like, if you're consistently getting leads and getting on the phone or if you're consistently selling, I always say get on the phone because that's what I do for my business. That's not even what all of my clients do. But whatever you do to sell, if you're consistently doing personal outreach, if you're consistently sending emails, if you're like whatever you do to sell, if you're consistently doing it and you talk to 20 different individuals, I promise you that eventually you will get a client. The thing is, from that first person, how you react to that, whether it's a yes or no, it's going to determine what's going to happen afterwards. So what happens is in between the process of getting people to see the value and in between the process of getting clients to come to you, right, to find you, if you go back five steps, that's when it becomes really, really hard, right? That's when we also go into like, I'll get a client here and I'll get a client there, you know, but nothing consistently, no really solid income, no really solid growth. And it's because we do a little bit here, then maybe we have a specific situation where someone is like, no, this is not for me. And then we feel bad about ourselves. And then you go into like resistance and not showing up. And then you don't show up for your business for a few weeks. And then you show up again. And then you just go into this really big cycle. So what I taught you today is going to help you get people to see the value in actually paying, right? It's going to help you convert more. It's going to help you make more money. And also it's going to help you be okay with when it doesn't happen. It would be such a disservice for me to tell you, if you do this, you will never get a no. That's just not how business works. Everyone gets a no. Everyone. Even the McDonald's drive through who's trying to upgrade you to a Big Mac instead of a dollar menu, they get no's, right? It's just part of being in business. It's just a matter of putting systems in place, and showing up in a way that we get them less and less and less. All right. Hey, Josephine, welcome. Love and believe too. Thank you. My lipstick? I hope so. Thank you. It's Maybelline. I told you guys I would give you the name a few episodes ago. So I will do it next week. Um, I forgot what it is. I'll share it with you in the comments. Okay. That's it for today. Does anyone have any questions? Do you want me to go deeper into something? Do you have a specific situation that's happening in your business that you want more support around? Um, is there a specific part that you're resistant to and you want additional help? Let me know now. I'll stay for another minute. Um, and I'm happy to support you more on an individual level. If not, drop it in the comments. And I will 100% come back to the comments as I always do and support you further. Um, let me know if you like this. If you did, awesome. We are here every Monday at 10 a.m. for new episodes of the Business Breakthrough with Barbara Show, where we talk all things growing a coaching business through strategy, confidence, and intuition. Let's see what we got. Love this bar. The mindset work is so needed, 100%. Um, thank you for reminding us that we will get lots of no's. Yes, and I wouldn't even say lots, right? Like, you will get some no's. It's just part of it. At first, maybe you'll get nine no's and a yes. And then you'll get really, really good. And then you'll get five no's and five yeses, right? And then you get really, really, really good. And you get, like, one no and five yeses, right? And then you may go through a stage in your business where you go back to getting a little bit more, right? But it's not like you're constantly on a defeating cycle of getting no's, right? Like it gets better and better and better. And it's just part of the process and it's totally okay. You're not meant to work with everyone that you talk to. Struggling to go from ministry to business mindset. So this is so good. Oh, I love that. Love, love, love that. Um, okay. Love that. What else do I have to say? I'm going to wrap up with the same thing that I started with, which is, if any of you want to work with a business coach who's been in the industry for over six years, helping dozens and dozens of clients from all over the world to build wildly profitable and fulfilling businesses from scratch, you must check out my Conscious Black Friday offer, okay? It is my most successful and my most popular one-on-one -on -one coaching program. We worked together for six months. It's just amazing, guys. Like, 
For any of you who work with me, you know, we are talking all day, every day. We are moving through absolutely every little piece of your business together. You are never wondering, what should I do? How should I do this? What's the strategy that I need to implement? Should I grow a group or should I do this? How do I get more people into my email list? How do I actually get people to convert? I have a sales call tomorrow. What do I say? My sales call said yes. Who do I celebrate with? My sales call said no. What do I do? I feel defeated, right? Like those are all things that you and I are constantly working through when we work together as a coach. Most of my clients see amazing success after we're done with the program and so many of them start from scratch like they literally have zero and they end up booked out with clients making back their investment double tripling quadrupling their investments even more sometimes it's an amazing amazing program some features i never talk about the features but we have 18 coaching sessions together three sessions a month we get one week for implementation however in between sessions you and i are talking all the time i'm reviewing as a six-month program i'm reviewing um your work, your copy, your sales post, your website. I'm literally going through absolutely everything that you do in your business and making sure that we're optimizing it. Um, we're navigating every fear, doubt, insecurity, anxious feeling, emotion, anything, even life things that come up, right? Like we may be having a great progress. We may be having great progress in business, but then you get in, you're getting into fights with your husband every day. So you're feeling a little bit unmotivated or you're maybe doing really well in your business, but then there's something on your life that's like walking you. Like we literally navigate everything that we encounter to help you grow your business. You also get unlimited access to me in between sessions. You get unlimited copy reviews. You get unlimited emergency sessions, okay? There is no coach in the market who offers emergency sessions unlimited as well. That means, that means that if tomorrow you book a call and you don't know what to say, you can book an emergency session and I will do a practice call with you and I will help you out with whatever you need to. And we will move through whatever thought that you may having or fear that may, may be coming up, right? Like we will maybe create an outline together, right? Or let's say you're in the middle of a launch and you're about to close the card and you're like, 30% close to hitting your income goal, but you're not that close because there's only one day left. What do we need to do? You can book an emergency call and we can strategize around that. Like there's just so much value in my coaching program. I literally structure it in a way that no coach other does. And with Conscious Black Friday, you get $3,000 off. So you work with me for six months for a crazy price, considering that most of my clients made back their investments like this. Right. If you think about it, depending on what type of coaching you do, you book one, two clients, your investment is back. Most of my clients do a lot more. Right. So if you have been wanting to work with a coach, book a discovery call. You need to book a discovery call before the end of this week. You can book the call for next week because my calendar is pretty full with a lot of calls. You can book the call for next week. But you have to book it before the end of the week. You can check out the program. There's a sales page if you want to look at the breakdown. Um, but we must hop on the phone. I am not accepting everyone into this program. As a matter of fact, I hopped on a lot of calls over the past few weeks. I'm holding off for the last spot. I had two spots. I filled up one. I'm holding off for that last spot because I really want to make sure that whoever uh, joins it is someone who's really going to take advantage of it and 100% show up for the experience. So if you have questions about that, let me know as well. Other than that, I will see you next Monday at 10 a.m. Eastern for another episode of the Business Breakthrough with Barbara show. Thank you so much for being here live. You guys are amazing. I love hanging out with you. And if you're watching the replay, I love you too. Let me know if you need additional support. Have an amazing rest of your week, everyone. Bye.